If you remember in a previous video, we looked at scientific notation or standard form, and we looked at how you would put a large number, like this one, 24,000, into scientific notation, standard form as it's also known. Um, and in order to do that, we're looking for one number multiplied by another. The second number is going to be a power of 10. And the first number has got to be one or more, but it also must be less than 10. So in this case, the first number is gonna be 2.4. It's larger than one, larger than or equal to one, and it's less than 10. And we're saying, right, what power of 10 do we need to multiply 2.4 by in order to give us 24,000? And that was 2.4 times by 10 to the four, which is 2.4 times by 10, times by 10, times by 10, times by 10 again. 2.4 times 10 to the four, okay. Supposing we started looking at smaller numbers. Supposing we now looked at 2,400. We've come down actually, we've divided by 10. We've come down by one power of 10. So we've got the same first number, 2.4. What do we multiply 2.4 by to get 2,400? Well, we multiply it by 1,000, which is 10 to the power of three. And if we come down again, 240, that's gonna be 2.4 times by 10 to the power of two, 2.4 times 100. Now supposing we continue this list and we make this number get smaller and smaller and smaller by a power of 10 each time, let's have a look what happens. Come down one more power of 10, gives us 24. That equals 2.4 times by, and in standard form or scientific notation, we would write 10 to the power of one. Okay, supposing we actually get now to 2.4. Interestingly, this is the number that we've been using all the way down. Well, for scientific notation, we still have to do one number times by a power of 10. So it's 2.4. But what will we times 2.4 by, by to give us 2.4? We times it by one. And in terms of a power of 10, that's 10 to the power of zero, because anything to the power of zero equals one. So it's 2.4 times by one, 2.4 times 10 to the power of zero. So if you notice what's happening here, our power of 10 is just reducing by one each time. And we're gonna use that pattern to consider what happens when we start going into numbers that are, are, are less than one. So if we now have 0 0.24, we've dropped again by a power of 10. You'll see our digits there have shifted one place to the right as they've continued to do all the way down. For scientific notation, standard form, we still got to start with this 2.4 because we've got to have a number that's one or above uh, and less than 10. So we've still got to keep that 2.4 times by 10. And what do you think is going to be our power? Four, three, two, one, zero. We're just reducing by one each time. So our power now is minus one. So see what we've got here? We've dropped right down to the point where actually we've got 2.4 times by 10 to a negative power. And the effect that that's, have, that that's had over here, that multiplying by this negative power, actually is the same as we've divided by 10. Moving from here to here, we've divided by 10 by dropping this power by one. And we can carry this on. Uh, 0.024, just the same. Starting with that 2.4 again, times by 10 to the minus two. 0 0.0024 equals 2.4 times by 10 to the minus three. So there's an interesting pattern that's 
that's developed here. And as we've developed the pattern, we've been able to see, we can start to see how we handle these numbers that are lower than one and how we use negative powers in order to do that. Now, it's interesting to think, if you were to look at that, the three here, if you were to, if you were to think about shifting these digits so that you get, got to 2.4, well, actually, you can see that that two has moved one, two, three places to the left in order to sit here, just in front of the decimal point. And because it's moved this way, that's where this minus comes from. So that minus three means we're taking this number and moving it three places this way. Interestingly, you would, you'd notice as well that that three always corresponds to the fact that you've got three zeros there before your first non-zero digit. You've got three zeros, including the one before the decimal point, um, which is just an interesting point to notice. Um, okay, so this is putting numbers in to standard form. And let's just take an example. Rather than working from this pattern, let's take an example of um, 0 0.0004. Seven. And we want to put that number into standard form, scientific notation. Okay, so we know we need two numbers, something multiplied by 10 to the power of something. We know that our first number has got to be bigger than 1, it's got to be 1 or more, and it's got to be less than 10. So when we look at the number we're working with, we're actually going to pick 4.7. Essentially, we're looking at where we can shift these numbers to so that we find our first number, which is bigger than one, uh, one or more. 4.7 is our start times by 10 to the power of what? Okay, well, we need to think how many places have we had to move this for? One, two, three, four. And we've moved it. We've moved the numbers this way, so it's times by 10 to the minus four. Or well, another way to think about that is 4.7. If we multiplied that by 10, by a positive power of 10, it's going to get bigger. It would become 47, 470, 4,700. That's not what we're doing. We're looking to make this a very small number, 4.7, therefore times 10 to the minus four. And that's how we convert into scientific notation or standard form. Uh, with very small numbers and negative powers. Okay, Marie, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.